And so after what feels like forever since the last event, which I believe was the Christmas event, we are finally going to get a massive patch update. And so in this video today, let's go through and explore some of these because there are a lot of exciting changes. Hi, welcome back to another Revive Witch video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be going through the patch notes, all of this different content today. And on top of that, I'm just going to be giving you my thoughts on each of these little pieces of items because some of them, it's pretty freaking dank. There are certainly some meta changes like the previously most best in slot teams, uh, they're going to change a bit now. And so without further ado, let's jump into the video itself. So this patch is going to start, oh, actually in a few hours from now. And it's only going to last four hours. I believe that ends at 1 a.m. my time, depending on if it is 1 a.m. or not, I might stream for the Catherine pause. I don't know. Stay tuned, guys. All right. So to kick things off, we have a new main story chapter. This is probably like the most hypest thing for Revive Witch. Like, I don't know about you guys, but the main story of Revive Witch is probably the thing that actually keeps me playing for this game. Because funnily enough, normally it's the other way around, right? Like, so for Princess Connect or some of the other games, you're looking for the end game content, the raids and stuff. Blue Archive, same kind of deal. You kind of just fly through the story and that's it. But man, I don't know about you guys, but I am actually so invested in this Revive Witch story. So that's probably the biggest thing in my eyes here. All right, next up, we have Path Not Taken. So this bad boy is going to be lasting two weeks in which there will be weekly stages daily stages and training stages and so essentially it's a scoring system right so as you can see here clear weekly stage in this path not taken to earn scores only the highest weekly score will count towards the total score and we also have three 10 attempts. On top of that, a very, very similar system for the daily stage. And then we also have the training stage, which is the same thing, but we just don't get the scores counted. And then depending on your score, we're going to get a whole bunch of rewards. So if I come over here, rewards will be unlocked as the total score you earn from weekly stage and daily stage reaches a certain amount. And so from here, it looks like the main rewards that we'll be getting are souls, aka your little gemmies, mana, UE related materials. So generally speaking, this is probably going to be your UE upgrade materials. Advanced runestones, which are actually the good one. That's that's pretty good. Soul cryolites, skill materials, stamina flask, and path not taken avatar frame. All in all, a lot of really great rewards. I'm pretty sure like every single event we've gotten so far, it's all been like really great rewards. All right, and so with that being said, we are going to go into probably one of the more hype pieces of content in this entire drop. Welcome, my guys, to the unique equipment system. And so if you guys have played like Precon or Blue Archive or like a lot of gacha games actually that has a unique equipment system it is going to be very much the same right so every single doll every single unit is going to have their own unique piece of equipment to accompany all of the existing equipment pieces so what this means is that we're going to still have the three existing slots your weapon your armor as well as your accessory and then on top of that we're also going to be getting a unique equipment over here so all in all four pieces of equipment all right so let's talk about the acquisition method of unique equipment because a lot of people have been quite like, oh no, like we can only get it via gacha and stuff. That's actually not true. So they actually do talk about it here. Unique equipment can be obtained from raid collection summon, which is that summoning mechanic. So yes, depending on how you want to do it, you actually can get it from a weapon gacha. However, it is possible to actually redeem them from the intangible core in shop trials unique equipment. So what this is saying is essentially you can actually unlock the unique equipment from an in-game unpaid system that is going to use some in-game currency. However, just acquiring the unique equipment is not enough. You actually do have to level it up. So to do that, there are a couple of things that you do have to do. Not only do you need a unique equipment duplicate, you also need a bunch of upgrade materials. And so let me just give you a quick preview of the unique equipment system. As you can see, we have Aflin's pillow. We have Flora's harp over here, Akasha's sword. And as you can see, not only are we going to be getting a stat bonus over here, but we're also effectively getting another massive passive effect. Some of these are pretty nice. Some of these are kind of like, uh, it's kind of whatever, you know. For example, for Aflin's pillow, it increases her attack equal to that amount based on the sum of the physical defense and magic defense. Like that's pretty good. That's pretty freaking cracked, but it's kind of like, uh, it's, it's all right. But then we look at some of the more cracked ones over here. So Akasha is one. Scoring a crit increases crit damage by X amount of percent and physical penetration. And this stacks up to 10 times. So that means that Akasha is going to be getting up to 40% crit damage as well as 1,600 physical penetration, which is utterly insane to be honest. And so with her UE, 
Akasha is going to be very, very meta, especially in the Brimstone team with the upcoming Catherine. This bad boy is a priority, like it's very much like your Tornel Metamorphosis Ella comp. And so in this case, it's going to be Catherine, Akasha or Selenia, and then Tornel or Caledonia. Now, speaking of Selenia, she isn't available right now, but let's go down to her unique equipment. And so as you can see down here, damage dealt is increased by 22%, blah, 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 all the way to 32% for 30 seconds upon entering combat. And because most of our battles don't actually lasts over 30 seconds, this is pretty much a non-conditional massive damage boost. Of course, for some of the harder content, it's actually not that great because like you're going to be surpassing 30 seconds, especially for like the time trials or the boss rushes, stuff like that. Whereas something that is truly unconditional, so like Ella's one over here, that's like, that's pretty sick. 16% in dragon form increase in damage. I like that. But if we are getting a constraint of 30 seconds in exchange for doubling our freaking damage, like Selenia, you're freaking lucky. And so those two are certainly the priorities for these UEs. You could actually even just settle with one of them because there is most likely not a time that you're going to be running Akasha and Selenia together. But yeah, let me give the caveat again. This is all C and info. So like things may change when they come out in a few hours time. But generally speaking, I don't think much has changed, like especially from the translation over to CN. Aside from the art, there hasn't really been like any massive changes. And so before we finish up with the unique equipment section, I do want to mention this one over here. UEs unlock character level cap to ascend for level 100. So if you guys have not noticed, like we are actually capped at, I believe like level 90 or something. The second one we already know. The third one is a bit obvious. The fourth one needs calling out. So necessary materials for all ascensions can be bought from the same shop where you buy the UEs. And keeping in mind that all ascensions over here is just in the context of UEs, right? You have to ascend your UEs. All right, but here is the most important part of it. So a dupe is needed to ascend to level 21. Further ascensions after that do not require additional dupes. So that means that you only need one dupe to fully ascend a UE. That is good, right? Like, so for me personally, when I heard about the UE system and I heard the fact that you had to summon for them, I was like, man, this is, uh, this is going to be pretty tough. I don't know about you guys, but I like to actually like put my roles into characters like getting Catherine or getting sure. But yes, the fact of the matter is that we can acquire like a lot of this equipment, a lot of these ascension materials from the shop, which is going to be really good. However, now that we've touched on this UE banner kind of thing, let's just have a look at it. So on top over here are all of the different UEs. And as you can see, it is at a 2% rate. And then on top of that, you can see we have a whole bunch of legendary items down here at 6%. And I can see a lot of like the really good chaos and order skill items. However, as this note over here said, the UE rate in global will be increased and the legendary equipments with set effects won't be included in the equipment summon. So if you are looking at this sheet. Just don't expect this one over here, the 6% with all of this legendary equipment. As for the rate increase for the UEs themselves, it's hard to say what they're going to bump that up to. Like 2%, are they going to bump that up to 8% to actually make up for the legendary equipment that is listed down here? It's really hard to say, but like if anything, that's probably what I would prefer. And the spiciest part of all of this is that they are actually going to be adding Selenia's UE to that equipment summon pool permanently, which is great because previously like on CN version, I'm pretty sure you couldn't do this. All right, I think that pretty much sums up all of the UEs. Let's go back and have a look at which UEs we're actually getting. So it looks like we're getting Aflin, Flora, Akasha. So Akasha's is definitely coming in. We're getting Kaifon, Ashpia, Selenia. We're definitely getting Selenia and Sinetia. And if I remember correctly, we're actually gonna be getting the Sinetia UE for free via login event. Mm, there's a note down here, Soaring Sky Selenia Azure Archer of Wind will only be available in Recollection Summon and not in Unique Equipment Shop. So in this case, it sounds like the better option is going to be going for Akasha's one, especially in the context of the Brimstone team. That's probably what I'm going to be doing unless I'm feeling a little lucky. Maybe I'll throw in a tenor or something. But with that being said, let's move on. So we've have the Unique Equipment Shop open. And again, we have the Unique Equipment itself as well as all of the different materials that are required to ascend them. And so next we have number five, New Unique Equipment Summon recollection summon. This is pretty much like what we've just been talking through. So here it says that we are getting unique equipment, legendary equipment, gold equipment, unique equipment related materials. Okay. It says legendary equipment here. However, I suspect they're going to be removing the 740 gear score legendary equipment. And so it's pretty funny because like they did say that they did say that in their blog post. Let me just show you guys this one over here. We are intending to develop separate ways of obtaining the unique equipment, legendary equipment and dolls so that players can manage their resources accordingly. La -di -da 
Dadi Da, the legendary equipment with set bonus will not be put into the summon pool in the future. The doll equipment stages will still be the most important way for players to obtain legendary equipment with set bonus. And so yeah, it does sound like the 740 gear score ones are going to be removed from the pool. So it does sound like we are still going to be getting like the rest of these guys down here. All right, coming back to this one over here. The last thing we've got over here is Akasha rate up. Of course, there is going to be a rate up on the unique equipments as we progress through the banners. But with that being said, that is finally the end of all of the unique equipment. Hopefully that kind of made sense to you guys. All right, moving on, we've got a new sign in event. And after all of this, we are going to be getting Sinetia's unique equipment, which is pretty good. After that, we have the Dream Maelstrom Season 2. So essentially your battle pass. And in this battle pass, we will be receiving Matt Vive. So if you guys have not seen this character yet, I will show you guys her. This one right here, she is looking pretty cute and the pixel art is looking amazing. Honestly, the pixel art in this game is like second to none. And so as you can see, Brimstone Element Assassin class, this means that she is a direct competitor with like your Selenia as well as your Akasha with UE. And so it's for that reason that like whilst this battle pass is good, whilst I will still be getting the battle pass to collect this map Vife, I just need to let you guys know essentially that she is getting power crept on the patch that she is getting launched. So unfortunately, the unique equipment system for Akasha and Selenia just like it trumps this one over here. All right. And so with that being said, uh, shh. Good night, good night, my friend. All right, let's get back to it. Awakening summon, limited time open. All right, here comes Catherine, essentially, and then we also have the new dolls available, which we already knew about from last video. So we've just got Dana as well as Dathaios over here, and then Matt Vife. And so that's really good that Matt Vife is also being added to like the general pool, because it would kind of suck if she was like strictly limited. Like Ella was in the pool at the start, so yeah, why wouldn't they do Matt Vife as well? All right, moving on, we've got a new costume available. So two mother, Melody of the lake flora so if you guys have not seen this one this is the skin for flora it is a very nice skin and to be honest like i've noticed a recent pattern in terms of like all of this art that yosta or revive which has been putting out for the global version and it's that although this is different from the cn version it at least matches the freaking pixel this time and so if you guys do remember some of the earlier iterations so i'm talking like metamorphosis as well as some of the other characters that are available at launch that just completely look different to this and art as well as their pixel art, then you can see why I am happy about this new recent trend. But with that, let's go back over here and have a look at the new game packs in the shop. So honestly, I've had a pretty good look at most of these game packs, but it's really hard to tell like the value of them, especially because there's no prices attached to them. Maybe that's by design, I don't know, but until we see those prices, I can't give any, uh, any advice on that one there. And so with number 12 over here, lucky number 12, we have a new event called Reunion. Essentially, this is kind of of like your oh, come back and play with us kind of event if you guys have not logged in since uh, 1231 so that's 31st of December if you guys haven't logged in since last year then you can come back for a free temple as well as a stamina elixir and a whole bunch of other stuff but aside from that that's kind of it that is that is quite packed there's a lot of stuff going on here we've got the UE we've got a battle pass we've got new content in like the chapter 5 as well as the chapter 4 intermission and then we've also got your path not taken and if you guys wanted a preview of that this is a essentially what it looks like. But TLDR, this is actually very similar to like your contingency contract kind of thing, like your risk based content where you take risks and then you go and do the boss and then you get a higher score for taking more risks, stuff like that. I'm thinking about making a separate video for this one. I don't know. We'll see. That's why I kind of glossed over it real fast. And so with all of that being said, we are finally at the end of the video. And so it's time to ask you guys, which part of this patch update is your favorite? For me, whilst the unique equipment system is cool and we're finally gonna be getting Akasha and we're getting Catherine and all of that, I am still the most hyped for the main story. It is very much the key reason that I actually play this game. I really do like the RPG aspect of it and like the storytelling that they've done is quite good. Yes, I do want to know what happens next in a nutshell. And so that's how I feel about this update. So you guys let me know down in the comments below how you feel about it. And if you do end up leaving a comment, then it means that you've made it up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if you did like this video, please consider a like on it. And if you would like to see more, then please consider a subscribe. But look at this cute face over here. Here. Her name is Catherine, and she once said that all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.